Well, what's up, guys? This is James. Thanks for your continued support of us here at the Monaros Club here on YouTube.com. Before we get into the video, I'd like to take a moment to introduce my new Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash skabomba. Give us a follow over there and join us for live streams of meta, rogue, and homebrew decks. We'll have the link in the video description below. Thanks for checking us out and enjoy the video! Guys, just got back in from Pasadena with my lovely wife Elizabeth who's filming right now. Super excited, got a 6-2 record with King Piccolo. Uh, had an awesome weekend, and I just wanted to bring you guys the deck profile uh, for, you know, the one last ride with the boy for the fifth time. I just can't put this deck down. It's just too much fun. Uh, I felt like my build was super good all weekend, super consistent. Um, I wasn't the best player all weekend, but, you know, it is it is what it is, and we'll just uh, get to the deck profile and a quick tournament report uh, right after that. So let's get into it. It's going to be pretty quick and dirty deck profile since we all kind of know what this guy does by this point. So obviously got the four piano. We've got three of the uh, Dragon Ball Obsession just to kind of round out our ratios, uh, help us see the uh, early plays to help and help us find our unison uh, a little more consistently. Uh, helps our mulligan condition a little bit more because we're going to be shipping for this or for the uh, unison, uh, and this kind of can fill in a slot for that. And then we've got four of each of the Demon Clan guys, uh, Symbol and uh, Tambourine, and then we got Drum back here. I put it with the one ofs. <laughs> Got our secret rare drum, uh, just too, too based, uh, too good, you know, got to limit him to one. Uh, got to play four of all the other guys just for the max consistency, just because we don't have that many Demon Clan cards anymore. Uh, that's all our Demon Clan stuff. Uh, shout out to Ben, by the way, from a Scatter Report, getting me this super cool, like, Mace Windu uh, purple frame for the boy, King Piccolo. He was going to make it red, because the leader's red, but uh, he's the red didn't come out super well, so he made it purple, like a... Like his clothes, I guess. I don't know. Uh, we got three of the King Piccolo first steps to... Or two of the King Piccolo first steps to revival. Um, this card was actually really useful all weekend. I actually kind of wanted to have a third in the deck. Um, but, you know, that it uh, this, this worked out just fine. Um, it, it, but yeah, third would have been kind of nice. Uh, three of Piccolo Jr., the King Scion. Uh, and then we have four of the Piccolo Super Combo... Um, I think this is just the best super combo for the deck because it's the most consistent. You can use put it in your life whenever you don't want it. Super useful. Um, you can't convince me that Raditz is any good in this deck. I think it sucks. All right, for Yamcha Merciless Barrage, this card was so good all weekend. Like, I'm so glad I played four. Like, I just kind of maxed out on my consistency in the main deck for this event, and it was super clutch. This card's awesome. Uh, shout out to Josh. From locals, our local TO, he hooked me up with the SPRs right in time for the event. Uh, we got a U7 package, we got two surprise attacks on Gohan, and three Goku Divine Presence. Uh, the surprise attacks on Gohan's kind of useful, uh, he just helps get rid of the, like, uh, Dark Power Black Mass Saiyans and stuff, because there's a lot of hate for, like, Icarus and stuff floating around. And he's a uh, one-drop 20k, which is pretty nice, and he can combo with drum and stuff. Uh, just kind of useful. This guy's just can completely bonkers, I was just dropping him left and right all, all day, uh... On Saturday it was just incredible. Uh, I like having three because it makes it so if I open with one I can charge it and not have to feel too uh, anxious about finding another one by turn three in order to just start uh, walloping their life away. Uh, one Chompa, it's the it's the boy, you know. One of the uh, King Piccolo new ruler because he's, you know, the boy. One of the girl, Supreme Kai of Time. Uh, still my favorite secret rare for the deck. You can play Pan. Um, I haven't tried Pan in this deck, and I didn't really want to have to switch right before the event. Um, I mean, she's just been she's been solid for me for uh, months and months and months. So ever since she came out, so it's just super good. One fighting against fate. Uh, you don't want to have too much overwhelm in the deck because it really just you eat up your drop area so quickly with symbol. Um, it's just a little too inconsistent to have to do that. And you see so many cards that so this is fine. Uh, this is all kind of our tech stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward. Pretty much the same stuff I've been playing. Uh, extra cards, we've got one Freeze's Death Ball, three Testing the Opposition, and four copies of Violent Rays, uh, plus our Unison, uh, which is, of course, Piccolo Jr., uh, Descendant of the King. This guy's self-explanatory, you know, this is what the deck's built around, it's just the best card in the deck, and it's not even close. Uh, testing, super good. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of attacking you first. Um, if they're going first and they put you to five, then you can defend your unison with this. It's really good, uh, especially if they just want their card draw or whatever. Um, you know, this is just, this is like the best negate in the deck. 
because you can play it for free. It's, you know, really good. I think three is the perfect number. I have four is probably too many, and two, I, I just like to see it on turn two um, consistently if I'm on the draw. Uh, four Violent Rays. This was kind of tech because I thought there'd be a lot of uh, Gogeta Zeno and a lot of Soul Striker in the room, and there was a lot of both of those, so specifically I saw a lot of Soul Striker, and this is just the MVP card in that matchup. Um, and I guess Android 16 was in the top 8, this card's really good against that deck too. Uh, if people just start uh, riding that bandwagon, because that deck's all full of 20k's. This card's crazy. Uh, Super Glide main deck 4. Freezes Death Ball just to help kind of close out the game. So this card kind of was kind of sussy this weekend, I don't know, it was, it was kind of clunky my hand a little bit, but, uh, I would maybe change this over to the extra, um, first steps to revival, but this card's always solid. You can always find spots to use it, so... Yeah, that was the main deck. Uh, side deck, pretty straightforward here. We've got um, a lot of anti-blue stuff. We've got three Raditz, three Broly Crown, two Koitsukais. Shoutouts to Joe from Locals hooking me up with the first one. And uh, Lance uh, Manara's from the, you know, Manara's Club. You might have heard of him. <laughs> uh, hooking me up with the other one. Uh, I didn't want to pay 50 bucks for this card, and this card was uh, pretty good all weekend. Um, Two of the SS Kaioken and Goku, and then just kind of, I got, I guess, three Wolf Thing Fist, uh, Mechicabra, and a copy of Secret ID. Uh, I was expecting a lot of blue going into the weekend, and uh, I played against a lot of blue, so this uh, this package really worked out. You had the Raditz for Soul Striker, it just really poops on his ability to untap, just slows him down, and makes all their battle cards kind of garbage, because, you know, they all cost too much energy if they uh, don't get to untap. Early Crown's really good against all the Floodgates and stuff like that. It's, uh, you know, Soul Striker and Icarus leave up energy a lot. Uh, this card's really good there. Uh, Coit was actually kind of a little bit of an underperformer for me. Uh, I just didn't have a whole lot of spots to use him. Um, but he's he was definitely useful. Um, but uh, I think two was just kind of the right number. I almost didn't register this card. I was thinking of the night before switching it to Topo, but uh, it actually worked out really well because I played against Legends, uh, and he was playing a signature Invoker deck, uh, and I just was a huge sack and drew both of them, so he couldn't thought seize them away. Um, I really wanted this for... Uh, this was also useful against Icarus for all the like slugs and stuff that they play sometimes. Um, I really wanted this for the blue-white matchup, too, uh, for if they played the Goku Black that may call the blockers, uh, but they none, none of them ended up doing that against me, so it didn't matter. Didn't use Wolf Thing Fist at all, just for those um, low-to-the-ground aggro decks that aren't like Gogeta Zeno, but uh, just the different strats. Uh, Mechicabra just kind of as a little fill-in fill card. Um, it can kind of clear up some holes in some different varying matchups. Um, I'm playing against a Super 17 player, and I used this against him. Um, I never used it, but, you know, it could have been useful... And if I ran into, like, eight Android 18 mil or, like, a different blue-red deck, you can, like, name the Frieza to stop him from just, like, killing you or whatever. Uh, Secret ID, this is also really good against, like, the yellow and blue-yellow decks, because you can, uh, specifically, like, the yellow-based blue-yellow decks, like Icarus, because you can bring it in and you can, like, pop all the Goku Black tokens, or they just, like, play to the board really heavily, so you just bring this in over fighting against Fate, and, uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, quick little tournament recap. We got, uh, round one... Played against Gogeta Zeno, went 0-2, uh, looking at my crib notes here, um, I went 0-2 against him, I kind of made a big punt um, against him <laughs> in, in game one uh, by pitching my only pitch target for my fourth Violent Raise uh, and just using it for my hand and then realizing I didn't have the pitch for the Violent Raise on the crackback and I died. Uh, and then game two I just got completely washed. Um, Round two, played against a Soul Striker player. Uh, I think it went to three games. I don't really remember. Um, I, th I think we played out three. Uh, round three, I played against Eric Hill, uh, Manuel Icarus. That was my second loss uh, on the day. So having the those those early tiebreakers really murdered me. Uh, but he played super well, um, and uh, I, I I didn't play super well. So that that's how that went down. Round four, I played against uh, Super Seventeen, my homeboy. Um, you know, it was just kind of. Bad luck for him that I happened to be a huge Super 17 stand and Android stand, and I knew exactly how to play against the matchup. Um, and, like, Violent Race is just so good against that deck, too. Um, round 5, we had, I think, another Soul Striker. Uh, I might have gotten 5 and 6 reversed. I don't really remember. We had another Soul Striker who was playing, like, a Bardock Ape stuff. Um, I think I beat him in 2. Uh, I was able to force out the Baby Hatch at some point against him, because you really have to just kind of force those Baby Hatches out. The Blue Package really put in work this weekend. Um... Round six was a blue-yellow Icarus. Um, everyone was getting like really hungry and tired by the end, uh, and I think I think he might have gotten to the fatigue might have gotten to him. He made kind of an egregious error in game one that let me kill him. He kind of tapped out when he didn't need to. 
Uh, round seven, I played against uh, Mario playing Mechacabra. Um, game one, there was like kind of a weird like problem, like a kind of a scuffed ruling where he just had an issue with like there was an extra card in his life or something. Um, and we didn't really know how it got there, and the judges just gave him a game loss for it, which I thought was like really harsh, but you know, it just uh, couldn't fix it once that happened. So that was super unfortunate. Uh, so then we had to play another game, and uh, we weren't allowed to sideboard for it, so he had to play another game one against me. Um, and it was a pretty tight game. Um, I ended up closing it out in two ish. That's like two with an asterisk, because you know, that, that first game kind of sucked. Um, and then round eight, I played against uh, Legends uh, playing Invoker, his uh, signature. Uh, I took that one in two. It was two super close games. Um, that was probably my hardest matchup all weekend, just because that deck really puts you on a puts you on a clock. Um, but yeah, that's the deck profile, guys. I was super happy with the deck pro uh, all weekend. Like I said, probably only one or two changes I'd make to the deck if I was running the event again. But like the sideboard felt almost perfect. Like um, the Wolf Fang fists, uh, I didn't really need, but uh, other than that, everything else seems super clutch. Uh, I might consider main decking this, but I still really like just main decking fighting against Fate, and I think main decking both is too much overwhelm for the deck. Uh, this card's just MVP of the weekend. I used it almost every single match. It was just insanely good, um, even against like Legends, because you just want to have a couple of these in your hand against Invoker to make sure they can't just victory strike you. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the channel, guys. Um, Shoutouts to Scatter Report, uh, putting us up, giving us a good rate on an Airbnb, and just hanging out and being bros all weekend. Shoutouts to my wife, Elizabeth, who's filming right now. And, uh, you know, Lance Menar is running the channel, all that good stuff. Uh, Zulu's Board Game Cafe, where we run locals every Wednesday, Saturday. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be the profile, guys. I'll see you next season. Peace.